been breeding steppe horses in Central Asia for more than 3,000 years. One of the oldest tribes is the Kyrgyz. Their forced integration into the former Soviet Empire destroyed their customs and traditions. But now the Kyrgyz horse riding culture is making a comeback. Jacqueline Ripard, a French horse expert, has made it her mission to save the steppe horses. She wants to find the original Kyrgyz horse. She's been living in Kyrgyzstan for six years. In two months, she wants to organize a big horse riding festival. In the Songkul region, she's trying to trace a special stallion, one of the last of its kind. The family of horse breeder Kumanbek spends the summer on the upland pasture because there's plenty of juicy grass for their animals here. Like many semi-nomads, they spend their summers in yurts. A very nice stallion. How old is he? Six years old. He watches over the herd. He has to protect the mares from the wolves. I think, I think it's, it's the best, best horse I've ever seen in Kyrgyzstan. Why are you interested in my horse? What's special about him? What I like about this stallion? His proportions. You can Look, see he's, in he's almost square. The back is His back is short very short. He's, more short. he's shorter than, than he's tall. When he, will move when he runs, leg, his back hoof steps into the print made by his front hoof. With the English horses, like it's English much further forward. And, back and his back doesn't like swing up and down so it's much. Why it's also That's why he's comfortable, comfortable to ride and, the and why he's at home in the mountains. As they drink tea in the yurt, the family wants to know more about the guest. You've come all the way from France to look for Kyrgyz horses. Why do they interest you? First, I can tell them Well, I spent my whole life with horses. I was a show jumper in Europe. Also, behind, the horse, behind there a horse, is always there are people. always people, Women, women men, men, children. children. And it's the, the relationship between, between the, the horses horse and the culture, and culture for that me interests me. To be very interesting. In Kyrgyzstan, horses are called man's wings. They've always determined the fate of this old Turkic people and the outcome of wars and conquests. Fermented mare's milk is still the national drink of Kyrgyzstan. Riding games used to be part of every family celebration. They say that the Kyrgyz can ride before they can walk. Nine-year-old Nur Sultan dreams about riding in a horse race one day. Not so slowly! Ride faster! You have to gallop! Today, Hardly anyone here knows how to train a horse properly for racing. At one time, there were more than five million horses in Kyrgyzstan. Today, there are one million at the most, and hardly any of them are thoroughbreds. Jacqueline wants to change that. She has her heart set on having the beautiful Kyrgyz stallion Gurkala at her festival. On the parade, During the parade, we, can we want to present the Kyrgyz, Kyrgyz horse, horse and, one of the and best his horse of is the best example of it. If my horse is a descendant of the original Kyrgyz horse, then of course I'm delighted. It would be an honor for me.
In Kyrgyzstan, a country five times as big as Switzerland, the mountains rise up as high as 7,000 meters. In the weeks before the festival, Jacqueline Ripin's search for the best horses in the country takes her around Isikul, the second largest mountain lake in the world. The biggest attraction at the festival is supposed to be a long distance race over nearly 50 kilometers, but not every horse can take part. Body length and shoulder height may not exceed 1 meter 50, and the torso should be more or less square. Veterinary technicians from the faraway capital, Bishkek, and an English veterinary nurse take the measurements and measure the pulse. The agile, undemanding Kyrgyz horse has a short, muscular neck, a strong chest, and strong legs. How old is the horse? Can you ask him? What's special about this horse is its stamina. For example, I ride through the mountains to visit Kazakh friends, and I'm on the road for 20 days. The horse doesn't mind that at all. It just keeps going. I do all my work with this horse. I even ride my horse to the toilet. Lots of people want to enter their horses in the competition and don't understand why they're rejected. It's a very nice horse, but not Kyrgyz. Can't you measure it again? It's a very nice horse, but it's too big. <laughs> The boys brought their horses from their village. They used to riding these horses, but the animals are not purebreds. They are crossbreeds from the Soviet era. They are their horses, they are in Kyrgyzstan, so they are Kyrgyz horses. Before the Soviets came, in 1917, the nomads had no houses. They lived in yurts in a wild landscape full of wolves, brown bears, and snow leopards. They took their horses to war with them. They drank their milk and ate their meat. The horse was like a man's brother, but also his pride and joy. The Soviets decided to replace the Kyrgyz horse with tractors. Horse races across wild terrain, uphill and down dale, the ancient specialty of the small, agile horses, were moved from the mountains into the Hippodrome. Because the Russian-bred horses were far superior to the Kyrgyz on short, straight stretches. The horse even lost its attraction as a source of meat, it was rebred with larger Russian breeds as productive livestock. The Kolkos weren't interested in the stamina, intelligence, and modest nature of the animals. All they cared about was how much they weighed before they were slaughtered. After 70 years of the Soviet regime, the Kyrgyz thoroughbred seemed almost wiped out. Then, at the beginning of the 90s, it was all over. Marx and Lenin monuments fell, the Kokos and Sovkos farms were abolished. Little remains of communism here, just a few rusty remnants of a desolate Soviet tourism. And the wagons you see all over the place. Under the Soviets, they were supposed to replace the yurts because houses on wheels seemed somehow more practical to them. The Kyrgyz haven't found yet the path back to their traditions. The void that emerged after the Soviets left is filling only slowly.
Victory atmosphere in Lenin Street in Timir Kanat. The young farmer Odis and his friends are on their way to endurance training. Last year, he won first place at the horse race in Barskoun. As a prize, Jacqueline Ripard gave him a foal, which he christened Prix Prize. This year, Odis is entering two horses in the race, the Grey Prix and Tai Kaskar, Brown Baby. They are meeting with the shepherd Kachkun on the plains in front of the village. He still knows the old training methods. Odisa's best friend, Tokto Sun, is supposed to ride the race in Barskun. He has already won four times. He is young, light, and sure of victory. You get addicted to horse races. When I'm the first over the finishing line at a festival, I'm a happy man. But the main thing is that we get back safely with God's help. We will see. Ride slowly up there. Only well-trained horses can survive the trials of a long-distance race through the mountains. At the last race, two horses died. I can't sleep anymore. I spent my whole time with the horses and don't get any rest. But I feel it's my duty and that gives me satisfaction. As cattle drivers, Odis and his friends work with horses every day. But that is not enough. The best training for muscle strength and balance are long, slow rides in the mountainous terrain. There are certain ways you can tell when a horse is really well trained. The old knew them too. Our forefathers said, you have to open the horse's eyes wide open. They looked at the horse's eyelashes. That was how they could tell if the horse was well trained. You always have to give the horse warm water to drink. And you have to make the fodder really clean and beautiful. It has to be washed like rice. During the race preparations, you would smell the horse's dung in the morning. If the smell was bad, you had to continue training the horse. They only have two more weeks to improve their training techniques. Then it's the real thing in Barskoon. In Bishkek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan, after almost three generations of Soviet rule, there are hardly any traces of the old nomadic culture. Jacqueline Ripard has been living in this Central Asian country for six years. In this metropolis, still village-like in many ways, organizing the horse festival is turning out to be a very difficult task for the French horse expert. But initiative and commitment were neither required nor desired in the years of the centrally planned economy. <laughs> A press conference at the French representation abroad in Bishkek. Jacqueline needs publicity for the riding festival being held far away in the mountains. The deputy agriculture minister is also using the opportunity to talk to members of the media. He praises the support of his government. After all, seven ministries are involved in the organization. Jacqueline Ripin presents the event's highlights. We have a lot of horses this year. We have selected 86, which correspond to the original Kyrgyz horse. They will also see a parade with a prime stallion during the festival. One of the most beautiful stallions I have ever seen in Kyrgyzstan. A grey one from the Songkul region.
Summer is drawing to a close. Kermanbek's son, Nur Sultan, and the stallion Gurkala are driving the mares and foals from the pasture. The animals have enjoyed the juicy grass in the steppe's high valleys the whole summer and have built up a protective layer of fat for the icy cold Kyrgyz winter. The Kermanbek clan moves on to the winter camp. Their ancestors used to live in the yurts in the summer and winter. Today, the family lives in a house in the valley in the cold season. Yet, for horse breeder Kormanbek, as for many Kyrgyz, the yurt is his real home. There is a Kyrgyz saying, it's only a den, but it's my house. Maybe he's a bear, but he's my husband. So, it's my house, and it's important to me. Now the yurt is becoming more prominent again. For a long time, that wasn't so. The nomad families have been coming together under the Turnduk, the yurt dome, for thousands of years. Their ancestors watched the stars at night through the dome. This enabled them to predict the future. And any time someone in the family dies, they remove one support beam from the roof. The yurt is a gift from our forefathers. I like it inside. It's warm. And I was born there. That's why I want to live there. Today, it's no longer the horses that carry all the baggage into the valley. Trucks do that now. In the Hippodrome at Chopon Atta, they are practicing kissing, or not being kissed. Try to kiss her, yes, like that. Try to dodge him. The horseback game Kiss Kumai has its roots in the old tradition of wife stealing. Back in those days, girls had to learn at a young age to escape the enemy. Tatyana has been Kiss Kumai champion twice. These days, she trains her pupils for the competition in Barskun. You have to be a bit ahead of the man in order to dodge him. Now hide yourself. Now you try to kiss her. Let's see how it goes. The rules are simple. The man tries to embrace the fleeing girl at full gallop. He gets two points for every kiss he gets. On the way back, the girl chases the man with the horse whip. What is so interesting about Kiss Kumai is the way the man catches the girl. But the girl also has the chance to show her skills and tries to escape him. After that, she can strike him with the whip. If she manages, she's very pleased. After explaining how to avoid being kissed, Tatiana tells the women how they should strike the man. You can't hit like that, otherwise you'll hit yourself on the hand. You have to hold the whip like this. Take the reins with one hand and the whip with the other. So let me show you. on the south side of the lake, they are also practicing catching girls. Bend over to the left, then to the right. Keep alternating. Azul is training with her father, Abdullah John, for Jacqueline's riding festival in Bars Kun. Azul, you come here. Pull the reins. You're supposed to pull the reins. You have to sit firmly on the saddle and then bend down, alternating between right and left. If you don't sit tightly on the horse, you might fall off if the horse stops too quickly. 
Or if the man catches you up while he's holding you and kissing you, it's also easy to fall off and hurt yourself. That's also very dangerous. Azul will never forget her first Kiss Kumai tournament. The man that she beat kidnapped her in real life shortly afterwards. Today, they are happily married and have two children. Azul's brothers, Akril and the older Talant, are also enthusiastic horse riders. As shepherds, they already spend their days on the backs of horses. But now, just before the festival, they're using every spare minute to train under the critical eyes of their relatives. Bending down quickly at full gallop was traditionally a war maneuver. If you lost a weapon during battle, you had to pick it up again, fast. Yes, the Kyrgyz were a nomadic people. They didn't live in one place. They were a minority and suffered a lot at the hands of other ethnic groups. But they were always willing to fight. That's where these games come from. Normal wrestling while standing is something they do for fun. In the sweeping steppes of Central Asia, people stay on their horses. No one wants to get off for a fight. That's how Udarish, a wrestling game on horseback, emerged. Sometimes the animals play as well. What you have to do is grab your opponent's waistband, or better still, pull him from the horse. If you hold your hand like that, you can break your thumb. So you have to hold your hand like this. If you don't sit up correctly, your opponent can push you off. You have to keep your legs down so that you don't fall off. Got it? You are to win there. We are going to Barskun. You are to be champion there. When Abdullah John was young, it really upset him that the horseback games of the nomads were looked down upon by the Soviets. So he's happy now that he can at least train his sons and their friends. They're all real tough guys, jigits, as they call them here. A true chigit is someone who possesses a great sense of honor, which they can defend at all times. A chigit can ride and play kokboru very well, can pick up coins from the ground while galloping, and can ride like the wind on a horse. Kokboru is the most popular of the horseback games. It's a sort of football on horseback in which a headless goat carcass serves as the ball. The name means blue wolf. The game goes way back, back to the days when the nomadic herds were often attacked by packs of wolves. Since they didn't have any guns, the step riders had to develop a special technique. They picked the wolf from the ground at full gallop and ripped him in half in the middle. Today, Kokboru is just a game, but a tough one for which you need brave horses. Yeah, Kokboru is a dangerous game. It seems worse when you're just watching, but it's not so bad when you're actually playing. The horses never tread on the players when they fall off. That's good in itself. Even when you fall between ten horses, they don't kick you. Unless they accidentally stumble from all the jostling or something. Otherwise, it's not that dangerous. Today, Kokboru is popular as a team sport all over Central Asia. Both teams try to get the headless goat into the opponent's goal. <laughs> 
And what happens to the goat? Worn down by countless hooves and grabbed by many hands, the meat of the goat has healing power, Abdullah John's wife explains. Most importantly, it tastes good. That's why Rosa is preparing kridak on the clay oven. A party feast for Abdullah John, his eight children, and 16 grandchildren. <laughs> Winter has arrived at Songkul. Now it's the season where there's a polar climate up there on the Jailo, the summer pasture. And it cannot be reached by anyone or anything, not even by wild animals. Wolves and bears move deeper into the valley in autumn. Gugala has to be particularly watchful of his mares. Even if nomadic pasture farming is still the only way to survive in the barren high steppes of Kyrgyzstan, the Kermanbeks are happy to have a warm roof over their heads now. There's not much to do for the shepherds in the long winter. Time to do things that get neglected in the summer. Kerman Beck and his son Sandelbeck repair saddles. The grandmother, Yaman Khan, is repairing the felt cover for the yurt. The grandmother can remember life in Soviet times very well. All the animals belong to the Kolkhoz. Every family was officially allowed to own only one horse, a humiliation for a Kyrgyz. The foals and lambs had to be taken away because of the production targets back then. Everything was taken away. The government confiscated everything. We hid the animals. We tried to hide the animals, but they took everything away. We only got 300 som for a mare, for a big mare. The people were driven into poverty. They really punished us. At first light, Kurman Beck leaves the winter camp. He likes Jacqueline Ripa's business idea of reviving the breeding of Kyrgyz thoroughbreds. He wants to buy a genuine Kyrgyz mare for his stallion, but he will have to hurry if he wants to have foals next summer. The horse market at Kochkor. Horse traders and dealers from the whole area meet here every week. Many animals are in a pitiful condition because the old Kyrgyz horse breeding has degenerated into a cheap meat market. The breed and quality of the animals have become unimportant. All that matters is what the scales say. A fully grown horse is worth between $700 and $800 these days. The most important criterion is how much fat they have on their ribs. Is the mare sold with the foals? No, separately. How old is she? Four. What do you want for this mare? 30,000. But no one wants to buy. If you want to buy, we can negotiate. The horse is hungry. So you want 28? The stallion over there costs 15. Slaughter him and weigh him. Then you'll see the difference. Yes, between 15 and 30,000. That's a difference too, isn't it? Once upon a time, Genghis Khan's horseback warriors roamed the wide plains of Asia, overwhelming armies of foot soldiers with their archery, even the European armies. Like so much else, this old art of warfare has slipped into oblivion. 
On the grounds of an abandoned kolkhoz, a hunting group is training for the festival. Jacqueline Ripar has come to discuss the festival program with them. We come from there with the horses. Then we shoot there with the bows. You have to bring the public into safety. That all has to be empty. Jacqueline hopes to achieve more than just a renaissance of Kyrgyz horse breeding. She wants to revive the entire nomadic culture. Rediscovering the old hunting methods is part of that, because, like almost all the nomadic traditions and values, they were nearly wiped out under the Soviets. <laughs> Taigans, Central Asian greyhounds, are fast and ideal for hunting in the open steppe. Under the Soviets, each shepherd in Izikku was allowed only two dogs because they didn't make any contribution to the national economy. At the rehearsal, just about everything that can go wrong does. The Taigans start attacking each other and the leader of the pack can't find the prey. Time to send in the eagle. Eagle populations were severely depleted in Central Asia too. They were considered harmful to the environment because they killed sheep. The old hunting methods may seem brutal to some, but not to Jacqueline. Now is the time to revive them. This is not folklore, but part of the identity of these people. I think every nation, however small, draws its raison d'etre from its differences to its neighbors. All over the world, nations establish their identity on this diversity. It's not just the step horse that is making a comeback. Traditional nomad music is also experiencing a revival. In the music school in Bokon Baevo, Akobek Sekabayev and his son are practicing an instrumental piece that they want to perform at the horse riding festival in Barskoon. There are 24 different folklore instruments in Kyrgyz music. They are small and light, designed for a people used to traveling with their music. The komos, a plucked instrument with three strings, is the most popular. Under Soviet rule, it was usurped by the balalaika. As a music student, I used to get teased for playing the komos. We were actually forced to go to the opera, and if we didn't want to, they used to deduct the cost of the tickets from our scholarship. The competition has finally arrived. Toktosun is packed. They've trained for weeks, hardly had any sleep. Pri also seems to be in top form for the race. Wearing the purple ribbon is a Muslim tradition. It's supposed to bring good luck. Before they set off, all the relatives gather together to pray that everyone will return safe and sound. Then, on a bright and sunny November morning, 
Jacqueline opens the festival. Today, Baskun is hosting the Achabush festival, which is dedicated to the Kyrgyz horse, part of the Kyrgyz cultural heritage. Today, Baskun has become the center of the horse world. Nervous tension on the parking lot. In a few minutes, the Kiss Kumai competition will begin. The mother helps Azuru to get changed. <laughs> There's already a lot of kissing in the field. Kiss Kumai trainer Tatiana is visibly excited. One of her pupils is in the next race, but she's nowhere to be seen. She is there and almost ready. At the last minute, Asu comes rushing over on the black stallion. Her toughest competitor is now waiting at the starting line. I believe in myself and in my horse. God willing, we will manage it. I'm sure of it. Every kiss that touches gets two points. For the first few rides, it doesn't look good for the ladies. Tatiana's pupil hasn't got off to a good start. The rider quickly catches up with her and smothers her with kisses. She doesn't even get the chance to get her revenge. She can't catch up with her opponent on the way back. The men either have the better horses or they've trained more. Then it's Azul's turn. Right from the outset, her opponent doesn't have a chance. She even turns around and waves at him. How mortifying. He has no points at the turning point. And then, he learns how Asura's whip feels. Each time she hits him, she gets two points. At the end, she pulls his hat off. Another three points, a clear victory. For Tatiana's team, the game is over. The girls always turn up for training at the last minute. Two days just wasn't enough. Next time they'll have to train more and have better horses. The horses they used this year simply weren't suitable for Kiss Kumai. When Kyrgyzstan was still one of many Soviet republics, the Central Powers in Moscow tried everything to force the riding games of the steppe people into the shadows. Sports like hockey and football were encouraged because they could be played all across the Soviet Empire, thus strengthening the sense of a common bond among the satellite states. Today, right across the country, there are young men who don't lose any opportunity to pull each other off their horses. It seems as if the collective Kyrgyz memory has awoken from decades of amnesia, and sometimes that really hurts. Quick kiss for the winner, and then the wrestling game on horseback continues. The man from Kizil Su has bad cards. At first, he doesn't do so badly. But referee Abdulijan seems to sense how the fight will end. The opponent even rips the whip from his mouth, a humiliation for a true step rider. And then he's got him and doesn't let go. Victories are celebrated right away with large quantities of vodka. Defeats too. More than 8,000 people have come. They celebrate for four days. At Lake Izikul, the old songs are brought to life again. 
It's almost like old times. Uncle Sergebayev and his son start playing too. They've put on their traditional dress for the special occasion. worth the souvenir photo. The hunting show planned as the festival highlight. But things don't turn out that way. The archers aren't allowed to aim at the target because of the audience and can only shoot into the air. And that's what they do, well or badly. There are too many people here for the eagle as well. So he's taken to the car. And in the hunting show, the hare escapes without a scratch because the falcon is more interested in the fast food in the rubbish bin. And there are other problems to be solved. There's not one single ambulance. I can't start the race without an ambulance. The village councillors have taken it to a funeral. The wife of an employee has died. I'm sorry, the race will be underway in about an hour. It may be that the officials have gone to a funeral, but I don't want any other funerals today, or injured people not getting help. Then this turns up, the ambulance. On the way back from a funeral, it was used temporarily as a taxi. But now it's here. Tokto Soon and Pri have also arrived. First, Pri has to have a medical examination to make sure he's fit for the race. Breathing rate, 40. Because Blood supply mm, is okay. Mm -hmm. His eyes are clear. That's good. Mm -hmm. To make sure he isn't swapped for another horse on the way, one of Pri's front hooves is sprayed with paint. We had a look at the course on the way. It's very difficult. There are other good two-year-olds. We'll see. God willing, we'll make it. We really hope he's first over the finish line. I have one as my starting number. <laughs> That's a good sign. Admiration for the heroes before the race. Riders and steed are ready. It's Pri's first big competition. Jacqueline Ripard doesn't miss the chance to lead the crowd at the momentous start. A merciless long-distance ride up into the foothills of the Celestial Mountains lies ahead of them. Soon and his horse Pri can't keep up. All the training wasn't enough, and having one as their starting number didn't help either. That's true of number 13 as well. They have to walk home. Endurance races have been popular with many nomadic tribes for thousands of years. So far, the Kyrgyz haven't participated in any long distance horse riding, which is an international competitive sport these days. The Kyrgyz can most certainly benefit from this sport and take part in international competitions. In my opinion, that's a way to use and profit from their knowledge in a positive way, a way of building a future through a sports discipline. discipline 
There are three races during the festival, over 12, 15, and 47 kilometers. Completely unexpectedly, having the start number one brings success for Tokto Sun on the one-year-old. He arrives back first at the yurt camp on the brown Taikaskar. But the first over the finish line is not necessarily the winner. The vets have the final word. After half an hour, once the horses have cooled down, they are thoroughly examined. If the horse in the first place limps or his heart is beating at over 64 beats per minute, he will be disqualified. He was first in the race. He has passed the examination. Now he's definitely the winner. Then the blue wolf calls for the Kok Baru final on the last day of the festival. Brothers Aku and Talant and their team have so far won all the games. Now they just have to beat Sarun, the neighboring village. It will be a tough meeting for both sides. It's about honor. It means everything. Again and again, the brothers try to get through to their opponent's goal, but the Sarun defense isn't sleeping and launches the counterattack as fast as lightning. goal for the opponents. <laughs> goal for us. Akul and Talant are doing their best, but somehow it's not enough. The father blows the referee's whistle. He's in agony too, but he remains impartial. After two halves of 20 minutes each, the score is 12 to 12. The rules of Cook Baru are similar to football. Individual players can be substituted. There are goals, a final whistle, and after extra time, there's something like penalties. The Kyrgyz way. I am almost 60. I would like to play today as well. But I can't really bend down anymore, or I won't get back up again. When the boys play, I play along in my head. I do everything as if I were still on the team. But unfortunately, I can't really play with them. Now, the game has to be decided with penalties. Keep going! Keep going! Talon tries his luck. In vain. It's the red team's turn. Nothing either. And now it's Akul's turn. It's all up to Akul now. Will he be able to focus? He can. On the last day, it's Gurkhala's big moment. Kurmanbek and he are playing the leading role in the Kyrgyz horse parade. To perform in front of such a large audience isn't easy. I'm very excited. <laughs> and I'm proud, too. I feel funny. I'm shaking a bit because I've never played in front of so many spectators before.
Here comes a wonderful Kyrgyz stallion that we found in the Tian Shan region. The horse is called Gurkala. He's six years old. The horse is an example of the original Kyrgyz horse. It is important to give back the Kyrgyz horse his place of honor. He is a living symbol of the history and cultural heritage of an entire people. We don't want to display the Kyrgyz culture in a bell jar, like in a museum. We want to bring these traditions to life again and adapt them to the 21st century, to find an identity, the identity of the nomads. Direct Joe Kaza, Direct Joe Nomad Sirap. Bad, Bozakagel Pazam. Binchi, Binchi Sinus, Big Jews Dollar, Big Televisor, Big Mom. 